Hey everyone, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm taking a look at a new game called Crime Sight. This game was released on Steam on April 14th, 2022. Its regular price is $19.99 US or your regional equivalent, and it's developed and published by Konami Digital Entertainment. So this is a new mystery simulation game with player versus player action. Some of the Steam reviews described it as a bit like sort of Among Us meets Clue. Uh, it's not exactly like that, but it's a, it's a decent place to start with the description. I've played it for an hour so far, and I decided to record one of my games, and I'm so glad I did because uh, I think this game would be very difficult to live commentate over, especially when I'm still learning the game. It's, it's quite a tricky game to pick up, for sure. There's a lot to learn. So for this video, I'm just going to do post-commentary over a game I've already recorded because it will just be a lot easier for me to talk and not have to use my brain the entire time because it is, it is a bit of a tricky game. Okay, so... Like I said, it is a player versus player game. As you can see in our room here, you can have up to four people playing. So if you just want to do one versus one, one person plays as Sherlock, one person plays as Moriarty. Moriarty tries to kill a target. Sherlock tries to figure out who Moriarty's trying to kill and also to protect the target. I've only played two games. I've only played 1v1 games and you can play uh, with up to four people, like I said, you can do, you can do two versus two, you can do three versus one. Uh, sounded quite confusing, like I said, just, just played one versus one so far. And there we go, we found Duck Heady, who's going to play with us. He's level 18, I'm player level one. There, when I was recording this yesterday, there were a hundred people playing it, so it's decently easy to find a game. Uh, you only wait about a minute, maybe at most. So here is our map. Like you can see, a little bit like a clue map kind of thing. Um, and I played as Moriarty in this game. So my goal was to um, get my, my villain to possess a weapon. Uh, Moriarty will explain some stuff down here below. So Ellery is our target. You can see A, B, C, D, E, F up at the top. And you can see it is a real person we're playing against. So yeah, Ellery is the target. I can't control Ellery. Uh, the villain is Dorothy D. So basically, we need to get Dorothy to get a weapon. Um, get her alone in a room with Ellery. And that's it. Then we will win. Okay, so hopefully you picked up on some of the rules in uh, what, what Moriarty was saying there. Um, basically, the, the, the game is made up of three days, and every day is three turns. You get like morning, afternoon, and night, basically. Uh, on each turn, Sherlock gets to move three characters. He can move all of them. And Moriarty gets to move two characters. He can move all except for the target. So I can't move Ellery. So my first thing was to move Agatha, which Sherlock also did. And if two players both try to move the same uh, pawn, then Moriarty takes um, advantage, of, or Moriar Moriarty takes precedent, which informs Sherlock that um, I was able to control Agatha, which means that Agatha couldn't be at the target because I cannot control the target, basically. Um, and also, the AI will control anybody who we don't control, so every character will move every turn. So Sherlock also tried to move Dorothy, so he knows that I can control Dorothy, and Dorothy cannot be the target. But the first thing I did was move Agatha, just to try and throw him off, and also move Dorothy to get her a weapon. Uh, and I managed to get Agatha and Dorothy a weapon. So yeah, some of these will be Sherlock moving. I mean, probably Freeman moving into the center of the room. Probably was just the AI doing it. So here, two characters are isolated. One of them is the killer. But Catherine is not the target. So that lets, uh, basically because Dorothy didn't kill Catherine, he knows that Dorothy is not the target. It doesn't tell him anything about Dorothy being the, the villain, but it lets him know about the target.
And at the end of each turn, uh, Moriarty and Sherlock talk to you a little bit. Like, Sherlock will be talking to, to Duck Heady right now. Um, at the, and at the end of the day, Sherlock will make some deductions and he'll uh, be able to tell the, the good player if the target is within three rooms of the villain, basically. So at this point, you know, Dorothy's got a weapon. I want to get her alone with Ellery. But also a good idea is to try and grab food. Um, try and keep food away from the target. Because at the end of the day, everybody will eat if they've got food. If they don't have food, then they will take a movement penalty in the next game. So if I can get the target to uh, not be able to move as far, that's a, a very good strategy. So I think, I don't, I don't remember if I moved Dorothy around, but I did try and snap up some food with the, just the regular pawns. And also, you might have missed it, um, you can see there's green and red nodes. As Moriarty, I can see um, the difference between them. For, for Sherlock, they're all red. Uh, and green nodes are food, and red nodes are weapons. So I can see where the food is, but Sherlock can't, so he has to really guess where food is. So, yeah, I just try and snap up all the food I can as Moriarty, especially once I've got uh, my villain uh, a weapon. There we go, Dorothy's in a room alone. She's grabbing some more food. She's got a weapon. I don't think she had food before, so definitely want to keep your, your villain uh, well fed. Ellery is just wandering off on his own, which is good. Although he's probably a little bit far away for Dorothy to go next turn. And Freeman's wandered off to be alone with Dorothy. Which, same as uh, the previous turn with Catherine, will tell Sherlock that Freeman cannot be the target because Dorothy didn't kill him. final turn of the first day. And yeah, you only have 10 turns to finish the game. Yeah, so Sherlock found out some, some more information. And yeah, at the end of this turn he'll say whether the target is within uh, three rooms of the villain. But luckily Ellery is within, you know, three tiles of, of quite a lot of people, so I can get Dorothy close enough to be able to do something um, and still uh, like not give it away perfectly. Like if he was in the far corner of the house and I moved Dorothy up there, then he would be able to tell that Dorothy is, you know, the only person within three tiles of him and it would say that she's the killer. So yeah, I'm moving Dorothy closer and also going to snag some more food just to take it away from Sherlock. And with my other turn, just going to use Agatha to try and uh, I think just, like, keep her away from Ellery. So I don't want anybody else going into Ellery's room. And you might notice that Berkeley's got uh, those little, like, sweat marks there, which just means he's he's tired and he's got reduced mobility for a little bit. Uh, I think it's only for, like, this turn. But yeah, he can only move, like, two, two rooms or two tiles, I guess, instead of three. Catherine's grabbing some more food. Very good. So he tried to move, Sherlock tried to move Dorothy as well. Which would like potentially give him a clue because like that's twice I've moved Dorothy. But I, I think I also moved Agatha twice. Okay, now Ellery is very close to Dorothy. But, uh, might not be close to anyone else. Yeah, Freeman has found a, a fuse box, which is an item you can use to uh, plunge the, the, the map into darkness. I haven't got that far yet. So yeah, end of day one, Sherlock's doing his deductions. And you can see he's eliminated a bunch of people. It is very confusing. Uh, but if you look at the Ellery one in the bottom left, you can see he's got rid of three, three picks. So he knows that either Agatha or Dorothy would target Ellery. But he also had those kinds of things for everybody else, so he doesn't for sure know it's Dorothy.
Yeah, so we're basically ready to do it. Uh, like, nobody is close enough to Ellery, really, to move in there. Because remember, you can see the kill conditions on the left. Yeah, you don't want any witnesses in a room or within line of sight. So, we're gonna move there, we're gonna assail. We're gonna try and end this. I'm ready. But yeah, nobody else is close, like, it's been perfect for us. And I think I'm just gonna move Agatha. Uh, just to stop her from going up into that room, just from wandering up into that room. And you can uh, you can customize uh, various parts of the game. So I think by default the round timer is on 90 seconds. Uh, I think you can do it like from 90 to 999 seconds, like if you're playing with friends and didn't want a timer. Uh, but for playing with random people, 90 seconds is, is pretty much perfect. Especially Sherlock usually needs a little bit more time to think. Um, you know, maybe you'll you'll find out later that you you want more time to to think think turns through. Okay, he used up almost all of his turn, so he tried to move Agatha. He was potentially trying to move Agatha up to witness Ellery. So it's a good thing I moved Agatha. Berkeley is way out of the way. Perfect. Catherine, limited mobility. She's just moving down slightly. Not even going to grab that food spot. Ellery actually moves even further away. But I think he's still within Dorothy's movement. Like, it's, it's impossible for anyone to get up there. I think he tried to move Dorothy as well. Too late for you though, Ellery. And there you go. We just managed to win it somehow. Um, like this was this was only my second ever game. The first game I played as Sherlock. Somehow managed to win that one too. Um, it, it's it's very very clever game. It's a very smart game. Um, takes a lot of thinking, a lot of learning. Uh, but like I said, like I got two wins in just an hour of of, of game time, which is pretty good. Um, but it's it, it's quite fun, and I do like that you have like those like little emoji interactions and stuff when you're playing with people. It's uh, it's it's very fun. I'm, I'm quite impressed by it, honestly. Uh, I also have an affiliate link for this game in the uh, video description. I think it just takes you to the Steam page. Uh, I, I don't get any money for it or anything, but I think it just lets the uh, Konami know that you liked my video. So if you're interested in the game, uh, please use my link in the description. That would be great. But yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with Crime Site. I, I think it's a very unique game. It's, it's very fun, it's very, very clever, and it's going to take a lot of learning, but, uh, but it, it, it's cool. I really like it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!